Hello, I'm Xinning Zhao and from the Institute of Process Engineering, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And I'm here to discuss about a paper named Antibody Therapies in Cancer and Autoimmune Diseases. So let's share the screen. Okay. Okay, I will then briefly introduce the background the two diseases and antibody therapy and the research and the reflection on antibody therapies for both diseases. Let's move to the first part about background. I'm sure you all know a lot about cancer, which is still one of the principal causes of death. Compared to cancer, we still know little about, uh, know very little about autoimmune diseases, which is also called as AIDS. Although it is a category of 5D diseases, disability, death, discomfort, drug toxicity, and dollar loss. AIDS can lead to reduced quality of life, secondary diseases caused by drug toxicity, financial loss to individuals or families, and even disability. The prevalence and the incidence of AIDS, which are increasing year by year nowadays, have attracted attention. So these are two seemingly unrelated diseases, but the increasing number of patients with both cancer and AIDS in clinical practice has led to the question of whether the two diseases are related in some way. In simple terms, let's move to the second part. DNA damage leads to the appearance of abnormal cells, which proliferate and develop into tumor cells, which in turn form a tumor microenvironment. TME around the tumor cells to protect them from the surveillance of human immune system, which is what we call immune escape, and finally become cancer. The factors affecting the development of AIDS are still uncertain, but it must be because the body loses immune tolerance, recognizes itself as a foreigner, and produces antibodies against itself thus launching an attack on its own tissues and organs, resulting in the development of inflammation and tissue destruction. So from this, we find that cancer and AIDS are actually both diseases caused by disorders of the immune system, except that one is caused by a weakened immune system and the other is caused by an overreactive immune system. So it has been pointed out that cancer and AIDS are like two sides of the same coin. So how can such two types of diseases with opposite pathogenesis appear in one individual at the same time? We continue to dig and find that there are always specific targets or cells that are active when cancer and AIDS are present at the same time. For example, patients with Systemic sclerosis, which is also known as SSC, have a higher risk of developing cancer. And studies have suggested that anti-RNA polymerase 3 antibody, anti-SCL70 antibody in patients with SSC can be considered as risk factors for cancer. And anti-SSSCA1 antibody is considered to be a biomarker for cancer in patients with systemic sclerosis. And another example is about inflammatory bowel disease, which is also known as IBD. IBD has been shown to develop into colorectal cancer, and the presence of Th17 aggregates in IBD can stimulate the development of colorectal cancer. So let's move to the third part, antibody therapy. Antibody therapies proposed for these two diseases are widely used today. Antigens present on the cell surface or in proteins can contribute to the development of disease by activating different downstream pathways. Antibodies that can bind to these targets can then modulate the effects induced by the antigen, thus mimicking the antibody structure. Monoclonal antibodies, which is also known as MABS, were introduced. MABS composed of heavy and light chains where the FAB segment can bind to recognize the targets and the FC segment can then bind to cells that have a killing effect through ADCC, 
KDCP and CDC to prevent the development of disease. So on this basis, antibody therapies such as ADCS, AFS, BSABS, and FC fusion proteins, and so on, have been developed. Among them, some drugs can be used to treat both cancer and AIDS. So this article summarizes some of the existing antibody therapies for cancer and AIDS in order to find drugs with bidirectional therapeutic effects. So let's move to the last part. The next table summarizes some of the antibody therapies with bidirectional therapeutic effects with uh, and it was found that the reason why these drugs can have therapeutic effects on both cancer and AIDS is probably because these diseases have the same target of action. Along this line of thought, we can look for common targets and corresponding drugs for both types of diseases. Some existing drugs that have been shown to be effective only for cancer or AIDS may also be effective for AIDS or cancer with the same target, thus maximizing the effect of existing drugs, saving labor and resources, and recovering available drugs for patients with cancer AIDS. So for example, in this table, we can see optic neuromyelitis, optic spectrum disorder, multiple sclerosis, and relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma have the same target, CD19. And for the first two diseases, inabilizumab for the first two diseases, and lacosticzumab for the later disease. So perhaps these two drugs can be switched to treat cancers or AIDS with the same target, and thus these drugs can be used when patients have cancer autoimmune diseases caused by the same target at the same time. So in summary, when we encounter a patient with a cancer autoimmune disease, we need to look for the common target and thus looking for existing drugs that have been approved to, uh, for both diseases or existing drugs that have been approved for one of the two diseases because it may be possible to treat the other disease as well. And finally, there is the discovery of new drugs. Antibody therapies offer hope of survival for a growing number of patients with cancer, autoimmune diseases, and cancer ideas. And it is increasingly important to develop antibody therapies. So to discover new targets of action to improve the precision and effectiveness of drugs, to develop new drugs for the discovered targets of action to reduce the toxic effects of the drugs, to design new dog antibody drugs to make the drug effect more powerful, as well as to explore the rules of combining multiple drugs in clinical practice and to draw experience. These are the directions of antibody therapies steadily moving towards the future, which requires drawings, exploration, and cooperation from multiple fields. So more details can be seen in this article, and these are the results of my phase study research. And I hope to conduct in-depth study research in the future, and also look forward to the emergence and application of more new research results, which will bring hope for survival to more patients. Thank you for listening.